everybody, welcome back to Art of La Carte, and it's May, which you know what that means. It's Mermaid. Woohoo! Mermaid is one of my favorite monthly challenges. I do about three of them a year. I do Inktober, Huevember, and Mermaid, and I did a little bit of February this year. So for this Mermaid, I had a couple of really big ideas. I wanted to create my monthly sticker pack to be themed around mermaids. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. But I also wanted to create a coloring pack, 31 different mermaids for people to join in on the fun. If they don't want to draw a mermaid, you might want to color a mermaid. Coloring has been one of my favorite things to do since I was a kid. And I love creating coloring packs. I get a lot of questions from you guys asking help and suggestions and tips on creating coloring books and coloring packs. So in this video, I'll give you some updated tips and tricks on creating your own coloring packs. Tip number one, ideas. This is definitely the first hurdle you have to overcome. Where do you get your ideas? Generally, I create them under a theme. Though I do have a coloring pack that I've sold, which is the art of Valerie Flynn, which I have a selection of some of my favorite coloring packs. But my general focus is always to have a focus in my coloring packs. Some of the packs I've sold in the past have been ballerina themed, chibi cute themes. And then my first coloring pack that I ever did was a mermaid theme. But this one was over 10 years old. I still sell this coloring pack on my Etsy shop because I absolutely adore the pictures. This leads us to point number two, the actual creating your coloring pack. How do you do it? You can either do it traditionally or digitally. Now, 10 years ago, I didn't have any of the digital options that I have now. So the original mermaid coloring packs were done traditionally. I would sketch it on paper, ink it in, and scan it into my computer. If you decide you want to do your coloring pack traditionally, some tips for you is to have really nice, clean, bright paper and really, really good lining pens. If you're using just a regular ballpoint pen, you're going to get glops and smears and it's just not going to look super crisp and clean. I would recommend using some multi-liners, whether they're Sakura brand or Copic brand. There's a lot out there. If you're interested, I will put some links to where I purchased my ink pens and paper in the description box below so you can check those out. Just remember to take the inking process as slowly as you need to. Don't rush yourself through this. If you're inking in traditionally, there is no edit undo. So now let's switch over to doing your line art digitally which is what I do now. I use a Wacom Cintiq tablet, and again, I will put links to the different Wacom tablets in the description box below. Um, I started off with just a bamboo tablet and then moved up to the Cintiq. As for software, in the past I used Photoshop, but currently I am loving Clip Studio Paint. I create files that are the size of eight and a half by 11s with a DPI of at least 300 to 350. Sometimes I even do 400. That way I know I'm getting a nice, super crisp line and it's going to print out really, really nice. If you have a small DPI like 72, when you print it off, you're going to get kind of a fuzzier line. It's not going to look great. So make sure to keep your DPI at at least 300. I also create on multiple layers. So if I'm drawing the face, I might draw the head on one layer and then draw the actual facial features on a second layer. That way, if one eye is slightly wonky or too far over, it's easier for me to move that and tweak it and do that without messing up the rest of my line art. Once that's done, I will save that file as a PNG. Some people will save things as a JPEG, but I find that the resolution's a little bit less. Saving under a PNG gives me the best line quality possible. Now let's move on to point three. You've got your pictures. What do you do with them? Again, you have the choices between digitally selling them or printing them out and traditionally selling them. And I've done both. When I've sold actually physical copies of my coloring packs, I self print. So I've never gone through a company or had an actual professional coloring book company pick up any of my pieces. So if you're looking for tips on that, I'm sorry, I'm still trying to figure that one out myself. But that's one thing to take into consideration. If you want to pay to get them printed, you're going to have to have that money up front. Not only that, but you have to get said physical copies to said people. And that will increase your costs because now you're having to pay for shipping. To be able to cut overhead costs so that I can keep my coloring packs at a reasonable price and also give my buyers the option to print off as many pictures as they like, I have, for the time being, decided to go with 
digital files. For that I use my online shop. There are a lot of different online shops out there. The one that I use is Etsy. I'm not going to get into the how to upload and all the ins and outs of Etsy. If you're wanting a video like that let me know in the comment section below. But they do allow you to upload digital files to sell. And those files can only be 20 megabytes each, which if you have a coloring pack, it's going to go way over those files. Before listing my files on my online shop, I generally convert them over to a PDF file. So you're not having to download this ginormous, huge file. There are a lot of websites out there that convert images into PDFs. Um, the one that I'm currently using, I'll put a link to that in the description box below. It's not sponsored. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. But there are some free ones out there as well. And that's pretty much it. That's how I do it. If you have any other questions about how to create a coloring pack or coloring books, pages, things like that, let me know in the comment section below. And if you're interested in getting a pack of 31 mermaids for yourself, head over to my Etsy shop and you can pick one up today. But what about the sticker packs, you might ask? They're coming. I was working on them last night and had them just about finished and realized I didn't like them. They were Some of them are nice, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So I'm pushing those back another week because I want the sticker pack to be nice. I just ran out of time. So don't worry, they are coming. Well, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, God bless you guys, and we'll see you in another art video. Don't forget, we're starting Tutorial Tuesdays on Tuesdays this month, so check us out. Bye!